When did you start working for my the, dad? Your dad. And when when you say your dad, you mean what? John Chenor. Well, I know who the man is, but what is his business? You act like you just <laughs> went over. You act like you just went over and did odd jobs or something. Well, just clean out the gutters today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm David Cooney, your host of the In the Booth podcast, a podcast about, well, uh, mostly, anyway, the people, places, and things in and around Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania. Today, I'm thrilled to have our first ever guest, Kelly McLaughlin. Kelly, welcome to In the Booth. Thanks, Dave. It's welcome great to be here. Well, it's not great. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> but welcome aboard. So, um, talk to me a little bit about, now, you're a longtime Mifflinburger. Mm -hmm. Born and raised in Mifflinburg. Yep. And your maiden name was Schnorr. Yes. Okay. And everyone knows, you know, the Schnorrs have been active in various things for a long time, including politics. Yeah. 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 So this is the beta version, and I appreciate you coming in. So this is the beta test version of the podcast. Mm -hmm. So during the podcast, we might be moving levels, changing things, adjusting lights, and that sort of stuff. So thank you for being patient as we go through that. All right, so I want to talk about, I'm not going to embarrass you, maybe I will. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your first job. My first job was at the Mifflinburg Tasty Freeze. So that was your first, first job? First job, yep. I was 15. You didn't, you didn't mow lawns before that or deliver papers or? Nope. Nope. My first real job was Tasty Freeze. Okay. I rode my bike. You rode your bike? about Probably about a mile. mile. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So... You worked, um, now, people probably are not aware, but Tasty Freeze is a family business. Yes. So. It was still owned by my grandfather when I worked there. Actually, no, maybe it wasn't. I think he sold it to Frankie Group. Okay, so when you worked there, it was no longer a family business? Correct. Okay. Correct. So your grandfather built the business. My grandfather built the business. I don't know what year. Um, and he owned it and ran it for many years and then sold it to Frankie Troop. And this is your grandfather that owned the garage, the gas station. Yeah. Okay. He owned the gas station, the convenience store, and the car wash. Oh, yeah. And the Tasty Freeze. See, I didn't know about the car wash. Mm -hmm. But I knew a lot of that land, including now, back would be north of the Tasty Freeze, mm -hmm. where the, the garbage trucks are now. Right. That was all part of your grandfather's land. Yes. And okay. there was there was two trailers back there that he owned, mobile homes. And, uh, and there's still one. Was that one of the ones? or? Yes. The one, yeah, there is still one there. Um, and there was one, like, directly behind the gas station in that field. Oh. And what's in there now? Nothing. That's just a field. Um, no, it's, I think wheels have cars back there. Okay. So, so they sold and then, so since it wasn't a family thing, you probably had to go through the throes of getting a job. You couldn't just have grandpa say, okay, you're hired. Right. Uh, actually Judy Bittner. Okay. Was my neighbor growing up and she worked there. And so she, I guess they were looking for new workers and so she recommended me oh an endorsement yeah what year would that have been because i do not remember for the life of me you work in there probably 1984 ish uh, that would make sense because that's when i graduated high school so i'd have been probably going to if i went to atlanta maybe that was in college I would say night around there. And I worked there for like two and a half, three years. And then you had enough money and you bought it. Went and got my lifeguard certificate. And then I was a lifeguard at the community pool. Oh, see, I forgot all about that. That's not even on my list of fun things to ask. You. Yeah. So I want to backtrack to the Tasty Freeze. So mm -hmm. was that was not the only ice cream place in town. And just so people know, the Tasty Freeze is now called what? Amy's Frosty Freeze. Amy's Frosty Freeze. Okay. But back then it was Tasty Freeze and that was kind of a franchise sort of thing. Tasty Freeze. Yes, yeah, definitely. That was like a national. I don't even yep. know if that's still around. I have no idea. I don't know. 
Okay, so you're working as a tasty freeze, mm-hmm. and it's not family, so you have to abide by all the rules and regulations, mm-hmm. just like everybody else. So, was that full time, no. all summer long, or? That well, work? I did it all summer long, but it wasn't like a full time job. Was it forty hours a week? No, I don't remember how many hours, but it wasn't full time. Okay, but I know, like, like now, for example, and then back a long time ago, they were open way later. Yes, we. I remember being open till eleven p.m. Like, I sort but of we remember closed. That. I remember closing the grill at like ten thirty. So ten thirty came, and there was no more hot so come food. Come and get me. it, or you lose out. Right. Because I remember going down there, like you know, at ten o'clock at night. Oh, let's yep. go get a sandwich yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 Um, the the funniest thing I ever saw at the Tasty Freeze was this guy. I won't mention his name, but he was kind of like this. Was back when he had like one or two pound potheads, and I was up there. Most probably around lunchtime when I was doing, I was by myself. And he comes rolling in on his bicycle and he goes, I want a large cone with sprinkles. But he was like all high and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, he waits there and he sends out the large cone with sprinkles and he's holding it. It's, you know, it starts melting and he's looking at his bike and, he's at the cone and he goes, hey, uh, can I have a bag? And the girl goes, yeah, okay, here. She gives him a bag. He opens the bag. He just goes, and drops in the back it. paper bag yeah. <laughs> and then rolled off on his bicycle could have cared nice less. <laughs> probably yeah. had the munchies yeah okay uh, the tasty freeze and back then remember the parking lot was all those little stones yeah yeah and did they, they had the picnic tables and all that kind yep. of stuff at the yep. okay so um when you're working were there like super busy days that everybody hated or um I don't remember hating them. I remember, um, you know, it kind of made the time go fast, oh, being true. really busy. But I do remember, like, the machines couldn't keep up if you were really busy. So it would almost then, you know, come out like a milkshake. So you'd have oh. to, you know, kind of wait for the machines to catch I up. I think that's what the guy with the sprinkles maybe got. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then you said you worked, and I didn't, I forgot all about this. From there, you worked at the pool. Yep. And you were a lifeguard. Yes. So back then, how did you get certified to be a lifeguard? I think I went to the YMCA in Milton and got certified, like in the winter time, the winter time before I worked there. Right. Because you knew you might want to work there in the summer, so you mm-hmm. thought ahead, good for you. Right. And then um, went on to get my water safety instructor, and then I taught swimming lessons. Okay. Yeah. Because you have the WSI. Right. A, okay. And so that was summertime. You taught swimming lessons. What time did they start? I think around nine. Right. Ish. Yeah. I remember I took swimming lessons, obviously not while you were there, but um, when I was a kid, I went maybe twice and I never went back. It was just oh. awful because oh. it was like the water's like 40 degrees in the morning. Oh, <laughs> trail. Freezing. It was trail. terrible. Trail. So, um, and then my daughter, she went and we made her do, I think, level five. Mm hmm. Is that far? Is that how far you can go? Before I don't. You... I don't remember the levels. But then my son only had to go to level two because he oh. he had to swim immediately. So we right. thought, all right, he's good. I think when I taught, it was beginners, advanced beginners, intermediate. Um, it was leveled like that. Okay, I, I don't. I thought maybe they had like dolphin or no, not when I was there. Manta ray. I don't remember what they were. Right. Mackerel. I was a sinker, but. And that's how it was. But we then went on, you know, we could all swim anyway. So we would we would go down there at one o'clock because then the pool opened at one mm-hmm. and we would leave at nine. Right. Yep. That's what it was open. One to yeah. nine. And my mom would give us a quarter or 50 cents. And that was you buy all your food for the whole mm-hmm. day with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. So yeah. then so now you're in high school at that point. Uh, yes, I was in high school. OK, so from there you went on to what? Then after I graduated, I went to beauty school oh, in you, Sunbury. Oh, so so could you have gone to Votech or didn't they do I that? I could have gone then? to Votech, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, if uh, I wanted to do that or not. Yeah, I so, didn't know that. I I thought, I just assumed. You thought I went to tech. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't. And uh, yeah, so then I went to beauty school. Yep. And beauty school is a full-time thing. You have to get X yep. number of hours or something. Right. It was like nine months. Oh, nine months, like full time every day. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I bet a lot of people probably, you know, they're grown with kids and other jobs. Mm-hmm. Maybe they do it at night or. Yeah, there is night. There is night okay. school too. That makes good sense. Yep. And then. Then. Did you work? Who'd you work for? Well, 
JC Penney's. Worked oh in their my. salon for a year. I remember that. Right? You walk right in yep. the door there by the service. Oh, yeah. I think I got a haircut there one time. Yep. I worked there for one year, I think. And then I got a call from Lib Dunkel. Okay. And she said, hey, I have a space available downtown. Would you be interested in putting, you know, a salon in there? Oh. So I thought, hmm, that might be a good idea. So Lib and John owned a building downtown. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's, you said, okay, I'm going to do this. Yep. After a year, do you think that was a bold move or do you think you were fully experienced no, enough I think to have I was, your own I, place? Yeah, I think I was ready. Okay. I felt like I was ready. Yeah. And then with that, was there like, oh, I have to get so many continuing ed credits and that kind nope. of thing? So nope. you just one and done and then you're good to go the rest of your life. Yep. What yep. If, do you, like today, you still are certified to cut hair? No. So why not? <laughs> I'm not looking for a free haircut. I'm just asking. No. Um, I know a guy that cuts my hair is really good. I did not realize <laughs> that when every time you move your residence, you have to contact the state board and let them know you've like moved. Meg, like a Megan's Law offender. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and I moved and I just figured that they would forward my renewal to... Oh. You know, they'd forward it. Right, right, right. And they never did. And um, one time I looked into it. Just, I don't know what, what I was doing. And I'm like, You're oh. probably cutting hair. And you thought, oh, geez, am I still certified to do this? No, because it just, like, I didn't do it enough to even have oh, it so dawn on me. You were done. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, this was probably just, I don't know, maybe not even 10 years ago. And um, so, yeah, I was like, well. But. It's a big deal. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. So now if you would open a salon, you'd yeah, have to get back in action. Yeah, I don't know what I'd have to do to, to go back, but I don't think I'll be doing that. So I don't have to worry you about have it. to learn all the modern haircuts. Yeah. 99 colors. Yeah, I don't think I'll be. Can you do a mullet? Because those are hot right now. I can do a mullet. Yep. I can oh. still do a perm. Can you do a number two buzz cut? I can do that. <laughs> yep. I know a guy that can do that. So then me. I had my shop for like, Six years. Well, so wait, how? So back up, if you would. Where did Lib Dunkel play into all this? She just happened to own a property downtown. Yeah, and I guess she knew that I did hair, and so one day she just called. So what property was it in downtown Mifflinburg? It was. Oh, it was um the old Wolf's Jewelry, not Wolf's Wetzel's. Wetzel's. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's funny because now there's a barbershop in there. Mm -hmm. That's where Aaron Boop's barbershop mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And now, so that's not where Harry Reynolds was. No. Oh. Harry's, I know Harry's shop was part of, I think, I think where the Legion is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think. Because there was a lady that had a hair salon in there. I want to say it. I don't know. I remember going there as a little, little kid mm -hmm. and my mom would get her, you know, I'm mm -hmm. going to get my hair done and mm -hmm. I would play with toys in the window or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought maybe it was, no, it wouldn't have been because when I was a kid, your hairstyling place was Wetzel Jewelry. Right. 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 Yep. And that's where that was part of our Christmas shopping. I think if you go downtown and you look in the front of, of the Legion, the Legion, I actually think that there's a, um, like a stoop where the door used to be. Yeah, and there's like a square that's sided over. Yes. And I want to say someone else had a salon there before you. Like, And the name's Shirley Hoffman, for some reason, is sticking out. She lives on Furnace Road. Maple Street, yes. Maple she Street. does. I don't know if she had a salon there okay. or not. I don't know. I want to say. Oh. I don't know. Okay. So then you were there how long? Six years. And did you like that or no? Yeah, I did. But then I got pregnant and wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Oh, so in the meantime, as you're doing here, you met a fella. Yeah, I did. And you did some courting. Yes. <laughs> yes. You had the courting candle. I told you how late you could stay out. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I did not know that. So when Mara was born, mm -hmm. then you you were not working there. Correct. You I had sold already my retired. business. I, yep, I sold my business to a girl. Um and uh now what was your business called main street headquarters main street head oh headquarters i get it yep because everyone paid with quarters 
Right. <laughs> um, okay. So that that's your hair. I did not know you did that for that long. Six years. Wow. Good for you. Actually, that's not very long. I don't think. I mean, for a hairdresser, that's a long time. If you ask me, because, and again, I don't know much about that industry, but it seems like some of the hairstylists I know, they go from one place to, they work for somewhere so long, but right. six years seems like a long time. If I guess if you have your own place. Yeah. Okay. So then at some point that property, I'm trying to think who owned it after Lib and John Dunkel did. Don't they still own it? No, because Aaron Boop owns it. Well, Aaron oh, sold it, but I always liked that because Aaron oh, right. has his family. Yeah, it was, that would have been his great grandfather that had Wetzel's jewelry. Right. Yeah. I would bet he bought it from the Dunkles, not from Lib and John, but maybe from Blaine or Blair. Oh, that's right. Because they had some properties. That's right. Mm. Okay. That yeah. makes good sense. Yeah. See, you, you stuck that pool thing in there that, that threw me off a little bit. Mm. And I've logged what? How many miles have we run and walked? Probably thousands of miles. I would say. And I, I never have knew no you worked clue. at the pool. Yeah, true. See? That, yeah. We don't talk. No, I don't talk. <laughs> you do. No one's going to believe that. <laughs> no, 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 no listener's going to say, oh my gosh. <laughs> Even when they're running, he can't keep his mouth shut. Okay, so then. Started having babies. Nine, ten, eleven kids. Yeah. When did you start working for my the, dad? Your dad. And when when you say your dad, you mean what? John Chenor. Well, I know who the man is, but what is his business? You act like you just <laughs> went over You act like you just went over and did odd jobs or something. Well, just clean out the gutters today. Schnorr's disposal service. Right. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so um I work I started working for dad when sydney was three sydney's your youngest yes and so she is now 24 okay so i started that's when sean and i we had lived in salem's grove for about six years and then we moved back and built the house on pinnacle lane okay and then is when i started to work for my dad and i worked for my dad for about 10 years wow and that was good times Working yeah. for family. He got a, a lot of flexibility. You got to do whatever you wanted. Yep. I know there were times my bill was messed up. Were you in charge of that? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, it was never messed up. It was always right on. Yeah. And you had all the high-tech billing software then, correct? Yes. Computerized. Everything was computerized. Tell me mm -hmm. about the computer program. Okay, don't tell me about the computer program. I don't know what to tell you about it. Oh, I thought you didn't want to talk about it. Because it's that program that somebody wrote for oh, you. Oh, right. It was, I mean, uh, Jim Randacker wrote the program, probably. And Jim was a teacher at the high school. He was, but not when he wrote the program. He, I think he worked for the CSIU. Did he even teach, like, something science-y, like math or computers? Or? I think math. Did well, this, he? This I'm not sure. This was at a time when the most advanced computer was, like, you know, an IBM desktop computer was like eleven thousand dollars right something. everything was run off of big floppy disks yes. and yeah. yeah so i and i remember when dad got that computer i mean i was in high school i was probably a junior or senior when he got that computer and jim lived behind us they were our neighbors and he would come over uh many many evenings try and get dad up and running on this computer oh my goodness you would see back then there weren't you didn't buy programs. You wrote them. You coded yeah, them. and that's what he did. And yeah. the coding language back then was probably what's called basic, which is, an, <laughs> I mean, it's obviously it's an archaic computer uh, program or and something still, to code. And this, the program is still doing it. Like, yes. they're still using that. Yeah. So you're probably one of the few people that made it through. Remember the Y2K mm -hmm. when everything was going to collapse? Yeah. And you're still using your old Commodore 64. Yeah, actually, I don't think I worked for dad then. Not yet. But I know my bills kept coming, so I know nothing collapsed. True. I was hoping I wouldn't get a garbage bill for a couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. right. So then you retired from that. Mm -hmm. And now you're a stay-at-home mom again. Correct. And your kids are furry. Yes. Yes, you have. Because the, the other kids are out of the house. Well, no. When I, when I stopped working for Schnorr's, 
I think Mara was getting ready to go to college. Cindy was still at home. Okay. Yes. I think I vaguely remember that. But because, and then and actually we were living in the Benner house. Oh, so you we were, were living building on Walnut Street at that yes. time. Okay. We were living on Walnut Street and building a house. So it was kind of good timing because I could focus a lot on the new house. Yeah. That makes sense. Then we when we moved in there after a little while is when I decided maybe I wanted to work for the post office. Which I also forgot about. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm really on it. I'm on my A game. <laughs> okay. So the post office. Yeah. Yes. So you, tell me about that. Well, that, yeah. So I decided, huh, you know, I, I had heard they needed workers. So I thought, well, I'll try that. So, um, I mean, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, I had, I was, I'm going to work up in Millmont in the little post office up there. And, you know, basically you get trained for like a week and they're like, okay. All you, one week? It's all you. Where do you get your training? Like in Harrisburg? Well, or? I mean, you did have to get like the, oh, what's the training you go to? And it's like CPR and safety, that kind of job? No. Mail handling 101? I don't know. I had to go up to Williamsport for. Envelope licking. A week. <laughs> and then I did do a training in um, Jersey Shore at another post office for a week. And then they Was put, that about as big as Milmont? N- it was so bigger. For people listening, Milmont, the town of Milmont has about how many people? I don't know. 500? 500. 500. Actually, you know, I mean, it depends. I mean, Milmont's a big oh, yeah, yeah, rural yeah, yeah, area. It, there's there is a little town of Milmont, there is a little town and that has like 25 30 people no there's maybe, no. maybe 50 i think when i worked there i bet there was yeah yeah maybe 50 okay but i i was you know i had the all the post office boxes there that i took care of right. and, and milmont you're right like once you go past hartleton then you're yeah you're 178 or four 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 five four five. Four five yeah and that's milmont yeah yeah so you're right it would have been a big mail route yeah, so I worked there for about two and a half years, but it was it was I really just wanted part time, but it ended up being Monday through Saturday, right? You know, and I worked. No, that's not part time. Well, I mean, I only worked from noon to four, but it was Monday through oh, Saturday. Right. And then, um, and you were—I don't remember what your title was, but basically, you were the postmaster of Milmont. Kind of was, but I really wasn't the postmaster. Because they didn't have a postmaster. Um, the Mifflinburg office took care of all the smaller offices. Because like, there was Milmont, there was Swangle, there's Hartleton, there's Laurelton. They all had post offices. And are they all still open? Yes. I think so. Yep. So they did all the, like, the... So the Mifflinburg postmaster, she was the postmaster. So we had nice. to um, answer to her and... Your assistant postmaster. Okay. Assistant yep. to the postmaster. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. So, you probably got to know all the colorful figures of the uh, town of Milmont mm-hmm. coming and going. Anything you would like to share about any of those folks? No, they, you know what? They were, mm-hmm. they all, all were very nice people. I did enjoy the people. I know one, one story I thought was fantastic was when the, there was a young man, um, he was coming in every day because he was waiting for his oh, yes. application from oh, Camp Cadet. Yep. Yes. He wanted to go to Camp Cadet. Yeah. And uh ended up then he couldn't go. I think he had some sort of health issue that uh, they wouldn't allow him to do it. Felt so bad for I him. I remember he, you said he would come in every day. Yep. Like he was so excited. Yes, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I like to hear that. And that's a great program. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was it was an interesting two and a half years. So you're a job hopper. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Now you're a now you're a photographer's assistant. <laughs> yeah. Once a year. Yeah, once a year. Yeah. And podcast uh, guest, professional yeah. podcast guest. Yeah. It's so fun. you're going from here where to like Joe Rogan or something. Right. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be getting calls. <laughs> I bet you. How'd you get discovered? Oh, in the Mifflinburg podcast. Yeah, the Mifflinburg booth. Yeah. You know. In the booth. Yeah, in the yeah. booth. You haven't heard of it? <laughs> so, um, Talk to me about your feelings. I want to hear your feelings about social media. 
<laughs> I don't really have any feelings because I'm not on it. I know. You're one of the few people I know, few English people I know that right. aren't on. What? For a while, you were always telling me, oh, guess what I saw on TikTok? Yeah, I, I had TikTok for a while. Um, you didn't ha did you have your own TikTok page? Like you loaded up? No. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I just you had watched to think it. About that I had to minute. watch it. <laughs> I just watched it. Um, but I do have Instagram. Oh yeah, that's right. I do have Instagram. Yeah, uh, I rarely use Instagram. I probably should, with especially with the, my business, I should probably do that. But I don't. I'm mostly on Facebook. Right. Yeah, I don't post much at all. Although I did post one this weekend. Did you see it? I didn't. I missed it. What was it? Was it a meme? It was a picture of the lake when I woke up, and it was sort of foggy. But the sun was trying to come out. It's very pretty. Oh, oh, I missed that. Yeah. Is that suitable for framing? It might be. Should maybe have that made into a puzzle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So speaking of puzzles. All right. Tell me about your hobbies. Yeah, I love to do uh jigsaw puzzles. A thousand piece or more. What's your a thousand limit? piece or it it was always a thousand piece or more, but you hooked me up this past winter with probably 25 puzzles that were your mother's yes and most of them were 500 and i realized that sometimes a 500 piece puzzle is kind of nice to do you're mm. not committed for as long in fact i think i'm going to go home and start another one There's and i'm no going to and i'm going to do a 500 one and you're saying oh you're not committed. If, if i would get out a 500 piece puzzle i would just get a headache i would sit down and finish it if it took me 29 consecutive hours and i was dehydrated and near death i would still sit down and finish that puzzle I can't, I'm not good at start something and then break away. And oh, yeah. No, I, I do enjoy a puzzle in the wintertime. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And um, what's your, what's the biggest one you've ever done? I don't know if I ever did a 1500 one, but usually it's just a thousand. I saw one the other day, someone posted a picture of it and it was basically, it was round mm. and it was white. Mm. And I had a bunch of little lines going through it, like just lines. And yeah. Abstract. I thought, how in the world? Well, you have to look at the pieces. And the well, piece that would shapes. be torture, though. One year, when we lived in Salem's Grove, we got a 3D puzzle of, I don't even know, some building. That was kind of fun to do. Oh, geez. Yeah. That would be even more difficult, obviously. Um, so you, you do your puzzles. Mm -hmm. You let them lay out. You do a little at a time. Or do you say, oh, it's my puzzle hour. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's in the evenings, in the winter time, and uh, I only do one at a time. And you do, to, to sharpen eye hand coordination, or what all about? Kill the time. I just, really don't. Break time comes. Yeah. Does it, what about Wordle? Aren't you doing Wordle? Oh yeah, I'm doing Wordle. Yeah, see, I'm not on Wordle. Fun. I've never done a Wordle. I get a lot of questions about Wordle. Well, you should try it, so then you know what you're what mm. you know. I, Try it once. Uh, no, I you don't have to have an app. You just get on your browser. And Where's it from? Is it Chinese? Because I bet they're stealing your information. No, the New York Times bought it. So the New York Times is stealing your information. Yeah. Yeah. They have a paywall, so I'm never going to see you in the paper anyway. So what was one thing that you had hoped I asked that I didn't ask? Well, I can't think of anything particular. I think you asked me a lot of great questions. Oh, you're too kind. Um. Yeah, I can't think of anything besides, I mean, we talk, I mean, we talked about us running and we used to run long marathon runs yep, yep. in the heat. Them. In the heat. And we'd stop and get water at people's houses. Remember, <laughs> remember the time we were out in Pleasant Grove? Yes. And that guy was, that was Sunday morning and he was coming out to go to church. Yep. And you asked him for water. I'm like, hey. Can you do, right. do me a favor? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I sent him a thank you then. So. Right. All was well. All right. Good well, times. Thank you for joining us. It was great having you in the booth. Yeah. You too. Thanks. Boom. Bam.